So, if you're a homeowner that is interested in an ADU, in adding an ADU to your property, the first thing that we would find out is what is the zoning of your property and what is the lot size of your property. So, the ordinance is written that you need a lot size of at least 5,200 square feet. So, if your lot is less than 5,200 square feet, you're out of luck for this potential development option. The next step would be zoning. So if your lot is in a residential neighborhood, there's a good chance that you have an R1 zoning or something related to that. Um, if you do, that's great. The ordinance is essentially written for you and it's you're fully open to using all of the benefits of the ordinance. If you have a residential lot, a lot of the historic neighborhoods in in kind of the downtown shore areas of Long Beach have different kinds of zoning that are not necessarily straightforward R1. You might have like an R2, 3, 4 zone. There are still potential um, things that an ADU can help open up for your property that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Um, if you have uh, like a mixed use or commercial zoning on your property, even if it is a single family residential home, this, the ADU would not apply to that. So that being said, let's talk a little bit about what the ADU can do for you that's um, different than what your property would otherwise be able to do. So um, the ADU allows you to add um, an accessory dwelling unit, which must contain space for bathing, sanitation, sleeping, and cooking in one particular place, and it can be up to 800 square feet or 50% of the principal dwelling size. Um, this is kind of a nice opener if you live in a if you live in an area that has a high parking impact. Um, and I believe in the uh, folders that you guys handed out, there's a map in there. If you know if you're in a high parking impact zone or not, which a lot of the historic neighborhoods and kind of more dense neighborhoods are, you're um, most likely don't have compliant parking if you have a street. <coughs> If you have a historic home, you might have sort of one of those one bedroom or one car kind of carriage houses, and you would be limited to a 250 square foot addition otherwise um, without having to bring your parking up to code. So with the ADU, you're allowed to potentially add up to 800 square feet or 50% of your, of your property, and, um, and you also would not necessarily need to add compliant parking, or if you're in a high parking zone, you can add one space. So that is a really great tool for increasing the possibilities for your home. If you're in an R2, three or four zone, um, generally speaking, the city wants to see that property developed according to the zoning that's provided for that, which already allows for different, um, for additional units. However, because of the parking compliance that's required, it can also often be infeasible for a typical homeowner who just wants to have a little granny flat. So in that situation, you have the possibility of doing some, doing sort of a two-step process with the city. There's, um, you're allowed to add a accessory building, which is something like a rumpus room or an art studio or a workshop, something that's defined in that sense, 300 square feet, and um, you know you get additional kind of clearances towards the backyard and side yards. And you can add a rumpus room and then in a second step convert that rumpus room into an ADU. So that's a way that it can potentially work for multi multi-unit properties or already zoned that way. Um, or zoned for multi-use, but or multi-units, but still only have a single um, family home on it. If you already have more than two units on your property, the ADU would not apply in those situations. So um, Let's see what else we have here. We'll do zoning, lot size, and parking. Um, let's see, with the ADU, there are also sort of brackets that go to how many bedrooms, like what you can provide in that size. So the minimum size for a limited, or for a conforming ADU is 300 square feet, and like, as we talked about, the maximum is 800. For a 300 square foot unit, you can do a studio apartment. You can do a one-bedroom apartment with 450 square feet, and you can do a two-bedroom apartment with 750 square feet. Um, you can't do anything over a two-bedroom apartment because the city is trying to define these as accessory to the main, <coughs> so they don't want it to be sort of a main living structure. So it's limited in that size that way. Um, let's 
let's see. The other thing that's kind of interesting about what the ADU will allow you to do that otherwise is not possible is it allows you to build a two-story garage. According to Long Beach zoning, two-story garages or two-story accessory structures are not permitted. However, you are allowed to either add a second story to an existing garage or kind of convert a garage and do a second story under this ordinance. Um, so that kind of gives you a lot of kind of more, a lot of different and interesting ways, potentially more efficient ways to use your property to fit this in. Um, let's see, what else? So the ADU can come in a couple different formats on your property and it can be a separate standalone structure, it can be attached to your main house, it can take over your garage. If you have a property that you're not really interested in having a garage, you can just lose that space entirely and make that into an ADU. Or like we talked about, it can go on top of your garage or even adjacent to your garage. So there's not a lot of limitations on where exactly it will go. The one thing that you do need to know is that if you are converting existing space, such as a garage, it does need to be brought up to you know, habitable code. So it needs to be structurally sound, it needs to have the basic you know, ventilation, lighting requirements, the shear reinforcement that's required. So it wouldn't be as simple as just throwing up a couple walls in the garage. There would be structural analysis that, analysis that would need to happen, and um, you know, that would potentially be a little bit more costly than what you're talking about. I think Tom Bittner can probably speak a little bit more about what the potential costs would be. Um, um, one of the other things that the ADU that we need to make sure is provided for on the ADU and in your site is a 30% open space. So whatever the square footage of your ADU that you're planning, you need to make sure that there's 30% of that square footage is available as sort of an open space directly adjacent or accessible to the ADU, sort of like a little side yard or something like that. Um, and then as Shannon's talked about, there's covenant involved so that's something that I think needs to be um, thought about with a homeowner's goals in that, you know, it needs to be, you are agreeing with the city that you won't uh, rent it for less than 30 days and that one of the units will always be owner occupied. So at some point in the future, you are not allowed to sort of like move away and then rent out both of the units. So either one of the units needs to be kept vacant or owner occupied or, um, where the city gets from that. <laughs> um, let's see. I think that basically covers the general aspects of it. Um, there's a little more specific things we can get into with historic properties. Does anyone here have a historic property that they know of? Okay, so when you have a historic property, um, you need to go through a process with the city, which is um, which makes sure that the structure you're planning on building or the renovations you're planning on doing are historically appropriate. So there's sort of a process that you go to after you generally design the building, but before you submit it for permit. And um, basically, depending on the size and extent of the renovation or addition that you're planning on doing, it can potentially be an over-the-counter administrative review or, um, or something that you need to send notification to your neighbors about and, um, and go before the council. So you need to uh, basically apply for what's called a certificate of appropriateness. Um, generally speaking, you know they want to see um, they're using historically appropriate details. Depending on your neighborhood, you may be limited in the types of windows and doors that you can use, with what you can clad your building with, things like that. They want to just kind of keep that character of the 